All right, oh. all right, I'm back. Nice. Uh, all right, so okay. Anya, I just wanted to say thanks for uh, hanging out. I love that. That was a great set. It was so much fun. Uh, and I'm gonna get rid of your video now. Okay. Uh, you could feel free to leave the Zoom meeting if you'd like, or stay or whatever. But uh, I'll talk to you after my 25 minute set of insanity. Hey guys, how's it going? Um, uh, Anya, again, thank you so much, Anya Jones, for coming out. Her website was lifeofanya.com. You can go there for all her socials and her updated schedule. Uh, but um, but now it's my time to shine. It's my time to shine out here. I wanted to talk about two-legged dogs. Um, Anya brought that up. Uh, two-legged dogs probably are the cutest thing, especially when they are on one side. Because, to be honest, how the fuck do they run like that? And not only do they run like that, they run like a gazelle. I mean, if I had, you know, one of my legs removed and I had to get around with one of my legs, I would probably spend most of my time hopping around. Um, but one, uh, two-legged dogs are the cutest thing I've ever seen. So, uh, cockroaches. Uh, I got a cockroach story. Uh, like Anya said, you see one cockroach, and you know there are like a thousand more on the wall. And cockroaches, like ticks, are like the two insects, the only two insects that fucking drive me mad. Like, I love ants. Even when ants like invade your house, they're so diligent at what they're doing. They're just marching around. They're just like doing their thing. They're like, oh, we, yo. Whoa. Oh, yeah. Oh, we, yo. Ants are cool. Spiders. I fucking love spiders. Uh, obviously, black widows, they make my lip curl. Obviously, brown recluses. Anything that's going to like bite me and then all my flesh is going to die. I'm hesitant to embrace them in my, in my love. But uh, other spiders, usually, if there's a spider in the house, I'm scooping them up and I'm bringing them outside. I'm hoping that he or she lives. You know, sometimes when you replace bugs into different places or technically, you know, spiders aren't insects, they're arachnids. That's science! If you change their environment, sometimes they struggle with it. I don't think spiders. I think spiders are like... Spiders are like Rambo. You know? You could put Rambo in the middle of a jungle. In like mud. You know, with snakes and leeches and spiders. And he'll, he'll prevail. You take a spider. You could drop that on the moon. It'd be like... <laughs> spiders rock. Ticks I fucking hate. I lose my morals with ticks. I like torture them. Like one leg at a time. I like, I, I bury them, you know, in water, in hot water, and I cook them. I, I, I can't stand ticks. I hate ticks. Probably because they spread disease. But cockroaches, I went for an all-out war on cockroaches in the last house I moved into. Currently, I'm in Brooklyn. Uh, I came to New York for my, uh, for, uh, for Valentine's Day to spend a little time with my sweet honey bunny. Uh, we did a little fun weekend away and I was going to be here trying to book some work, do some you know production stuff, whatever. And then the, uh, the stay at home, the COVID cleanse as I like to call it, came around and, and I kind of got stuck here in Brooklyn with my lady friend, which has been some of the most amazing three months of my life because we're having so much fun, uh, uh, i.e. we're having a lot of sex and drinking. Uh, I mean, there's only so much sex you could actually have. And I'll get to that in a second. But cockroaches, I moved into the last place. And there was cockroaches there. And I like to cook, right? I like having friends over. I like, like, yo, 20 people, come on over. I got food. I got food. And nothing destroys my enjoyment of having my friends over to cook than, like, fucking cockroaches running around on the walls running around on counters, your friends are eating, there's a cockroach running around, they're like, oh my God, because everyone sees a cockroach, they're like, oh my God, is there a cockroach in the food? Did a cockroach shit in my food? I had an all out genocide on the cockroaches in the new place I lived, because I think they came with me. 
I think I was at the other place where there was like cockroaches galore. And these cockroaches came fucking with me. And all of a sudden, you know, you see one cockroach, you see two, and all of a sudden it rains outside. We're on the bottom floor. It rains outside. And at night, you walk into the kitchen, you flip on the light. And this is like a new place. And it was cockroaches galore. All right? It was like a moving floor. It was like an Indiana Jones fucking movie. And I didn't have no whip. I didn't have no hat. I was not happy. All out genocide. I went, I got a little bait, you know? There's this bait that you get. And you put the bait here and there. Not me. They were like, little dab will do ya. I'm like, nah. Zoom, zoom, zoom. I was like fucking Michelangelo. I was like, sa 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 I was like, sa 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 Everywhere I could with the bait. Bait went everywhere. I had bait out the wazoo. But here's how you really fucking kill the cockroaches. Everyone's got to tune in. This is a how-to. This is a how-to on how to kill cockroaches. I swear, this will work. If you don't think this is funny, just tune in for the how-to to rid yourself of cockroaches forever. My Conan the Barbarian came out. My, my, my warrior came out. I was like, I will not deal with one more cockroach ever. So here's the secret. To get rid of all your cockroaches. There's a growth inhibitor. You buy it, comes in little discs, covers like a 60 foot square area, you buy 10 of them. You buy 10 of them, you spread them all around. What the growth inhibitor does, I know this is a how-to, this isn't comedy right now, I'm giving you guys knowledge, I'm telling you guys how to solve your environmental problems so you can cook for 20 of your friends. That's right, I'm doing it. You're gonna be like, oh my God, I tuned into this 25 minutes of this comedy workout and Man, I mean, he had some points, but that how to kill cockroaches really landed. So you got the growth inhibitor. You look it up, look it up, Google. It's easy to find. Get professional strength growth inhibitor. What happens is either it keeps the cockroaches from having babies or when they have babies, those babies grow up and they grow up mutated and they're incapable of reproducing. So I went Michelangelo on the fucking bait and I went balls out craziness like Conan the Barbarian taking on a whole cult whole cult of roaches by myself growth inhibitor have never seen a roach again that was three and a half years ago knowledge dropped cockroaches gone speaking of cockroaches wow America's having a real come to Jesus moment America's really having a come-to-Jesus moment. We flicked on the lights. I don't want to get too political. If you want to get political with me, we'll talk on Twitter, at Jack Zulo. We'll talk on Facebook. But I'll say this. My personal feelings notwithstanding, electing Donald Trump flicked on the fucking light switch in the middle of the night. Flicked on that light switch. All those cockroaches running around, running around with their fucking swastikas stickers and their uh, white power nonsense. Here's the thing. And this is what drives me crazy about the cell shall rise again. Holy! The crazy thing about it is the Confederate Army was so poorly run, the confederacy of the whatever they were, the confederate states of America, had no economy because their economy was based on free labor. No one ever wrote a book on free labor. They're never like, yeah, the best way to run your economy is on free labor and mint juleps, motherfucker. First off, all a mint julep is is a mojito with whiskey instead of rum, so let's not pretend that a mint julep is something special. It's not. I prefer mine with rum, thank you. I prefer mine Cuban. No offense. But, not to keep bashing our, our, uh, our, our Southern Americans, but the Confederate States of America, they were literally fighting 
an industrial revolution based war with Roman battle fucking strategy. They were literally walking the phalanx. They were literally walking a line of underfed, malnourished, wearing gray dudes into a line of Gatling gun fire. Like machine gun fire. They were decimated. Because they were so fucking stupid. Leadership was so stupid. And that's a problem. Because for many years, I want to talk about the history of the United States as I know it. I'm not too smart. I'm not too educated. I got thoughts. We all got thoughts. I got opinions. But the truth is, the people who came to this country and colonized it got lucky. I mean, sure, you took a risk, you know, back in the 1600s. You're like, I'm going to get on a fucking boat for two weeks and, or maybe a month and possibly get scurvy or possibly get, you know, some sort of disease and die on a ship that's going to dump me in the ocean and que sera, sera. But you got here and it was just an open land. Open land. No stolen. You know, it was literally stolen from the indigenous people who were here, the people who really showed balls and fucking went on a walk to nowhere. I mean, if you think about what the indigenous tribes of the Americas did, their ancestors, you want to talk about, you know, real fucking chutzpah, as our, uh, as our Hebrew friends like to say. Uh, they literally walked their motherfucking asses over a land bridge. They literally walked around the world. So, I mean... I don't know. Grand scheme of things, I think our indigenous brothers and sisters really earned the right to have this place, but, you know, the Black Plague decimating their numbers before white men actually arrived notwithstanding, people lucked out. There's no American exceptionalism other than your family sucked so bad in their country that they went on a road to nowhere for all they knew. So this whole American exceptionalism is bullshit. We spread out over a country, arguably stealing it from the rest of the world. Uh, I mean, Napoleon was fighting a battle. I mean, Napoleon, another fucking genius, was in Russia having his fucking, his troops eating each other to try to survive. Uh, sold the Louisiana Purchase to this country, which they didn't even own. So that's basically like, yeah, we don't care. We'll just uh, sell this to you. Sure, sure. <laughs> yeah, the Louisiana Purchase. They didn't know what they had. And we didn't know what we had. We just... Walked it and basically said, yeah, this is ours. We completely got lucky. It took no exceptionalism. And there was so much opportunity because there was so much room. There was free land. Remember the Oklahoma land grab? I mean, obviously, I think the Blackfoot were out there. I don't think they appreciated the land grab. But, uh, you know, white people did. White people got free land. So this whole idea about American exceptionalism is bullshit. Uh, I had a high school teacher who said uh, the Mexican-American War was basically a war where we picked on Mexico, beat the hell out of them, took all their gold and fertile lands and left them in the jungles and mountains. In other words, like, we didn't do anything but hoodwink people. Hoodwink, rob, steal, pillage. Now, worked for the Vikings, worked for the Celts. I guess it worked for us. Oh, what, what do all those people have in common? They were white. Now, I'm not white bashing. I'm not bashing America. I love this country. You know why I love this country? Where in the world could a fucking cavone like me be sitting here drinking a whiskey soda, doing internet comedy on a Monday night during the stay-at-home COVID cleanse? I have enough money to keep me going. I'm lucky, you know? I got a good family. I got a good stock, good Italian family. We've been here about 100 years. We worked hard. In my family. Some of us worked hard in other ways, but that wasn't my side of the family, my section, my branch. We stayed the true and narrow, you might say. Uh, and I'm proud to say that I come from good stock. But uh, we flicked on the light, <laughs> and there's a lot of cockroaches scurrying. And there's a lot of us trying to stomp them out, stomp them out. The question is, we can't go online and buy growth inhibitor. Not like that. 
We can't go get bait and put it in the cabinets. What do we do? That's the big question. What do we do? Now, I don't want to get too into it. This isn't really the place. The place is on the streets. The place is uh, calling your reps, calling your senators, and the place is definitely at the ballot box in November. Get out and vote. I don't care who you vote for. Get everyone to vote. Don't tell them who they have to vote for. Just tell them they have to vote. But, man, we flipped on the light and the cockroaches scurried. And man, there were a lot of them. And I like cooking for my friends. I can't cook with all these cockroaches. It's tough times you're living in. It's tough times. It's time to take a look at yourself, you know? What am I doing? What am I doing? What am I bringing to the world? What am I bringing to the world, you know? I'm a, I'm a storyteller. I'm a writer. I'm an artist. I'm a comic. Actor. Lover. Poet. I go to parties. I go to the party. What do I bring? I was out at a protest on Saturday. Um, very emotional. Very overwhelming. I didn't get involved in the chants. Uh, I didn't feel like it was my place to scream and yell. It was my place to silently support. It wasn't my voice that needed to be heard. It was other people's voices. And in those moments of silence I had, I was overwhelmed with tears and grief for my brothers and sisters who were persecuted. But I was thinking, and not to lighten the mood or, or to lessen the struggle, but this COVID thing's going on. I'm wearing a mask all the time. Get a mask up on my face. We're out in the street. We're on bikes. A lot of us around. People are giving out free snacks. People are talking. People are laughing. People are hugging. A lot of love going on in these protests. And I'm like, man, I feel like I'm at Burning Man. I feel like I'm at Burning Man. I mean, I was at such a love fest. Obviously, there was a lot of anger once we got to the police in their riot gear. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I, I felt like I was at Burning Man the other day. With all these masks and bicycles and free snacks and food. It was really somewhat comforting in a weird sort of way. I mean, talk about white privilege. I've been to Burning Man four times. I don't even have a job. I don't even have a job. How do I go to Burning Man? I have not. I, this is the greatest thing about being an artist. I think I've been most creative in staying out of a real job the whole fucking time. I have not had a real job. Hold on, let me count. 20 years, I have not had a real job. I don't know how you do it. That's what everyone's freaking out about. Everyone's been freaking out because they're sitting in their office for 45 hours a week. You can't even get an hour lunch anymore. You got your phone going off. You're out there having a cigarette break. And then if I worked in an office, I would start smoking cigarettes just for a cigarette break. You go out, you look at your phone, I got a fucking email, the boss needs me, all right. Back inside, 35 minutes. That's what everyone's going crazy about. People aren't happy. Obviously, white people aren't happy because white people were sold a, uh, a bill of goods about the American dream and little did they know that all American dream was is you could spend your extra money on guns and Bud Light. I, I think that somehow has become the American dream. Guns and Bud Light. I like a Bud Light. Bud Light's okay. I got a case of Rolling Rock in the fridge. Sometimes you gotta go cheap. Sometimes you gotta go light beer. I mean, this whole move to craft beer, don't like it. And I'm like, I know you're saying, hey Jack, you don't like good beer? No, I like good beer. I like a nice crafted double IPA. I like a chocolate stout. I like a peanut butter milk stout. What do you think of that? Okay? I like that beer. But sometimes, man, I need a PBR. American people were promised a double IPA. And they got tired of drinking the PBR. I'd get tired of drinking PBR too if that's all I was drinking. Sometimes I switch it out. Sometimes, just for the shape of the bottle, I'll have a champagne of beers. 
You know what I'm talking about. Michelob. No, Miller. Wait a second, Michelob. Oh my God, what's the champagne of beers? It's Michelob, it's Michelob, it's Michelob. Champagne of beers. But man, yeah, people were sold a bill of goods. And then they go and they, and they go to, a, they go to a, a factory where the grandpappy worked and the great grandpappy worked and they were making 45 bucks an hour and full benefits. And that was their job for 40 years, unskilled labor working on a factory line, Model T Ford, but now it's the future. Sorry, that ran out. And all of our manufacturing got outsourced to China and India and Thailand and Malaysia. Why? Because labor's cheap and we're maximizing profit and capitalism. Maximizing profit, minimizing humanity. But hey, I got a $99 60-inch screen TV with a surround sound. I have no problem with capitalism. It's unchecked capitalism I got a problem with. Like, uh, I say, I got a saying. My saying is, listen, man, you could have a yacht in the Mediterranean. You could party. You could have models there and champagne. You could do that. That's cool. But you don't need a yacht in the Indian Ocean. And every yacht is crewed up and a helicopter flies you back and forth between them. Just go, just go pop bottles with models on Ibiza, man. You don't have to be, you know, halfway around the world in three hours because your helicopter flew you from one yacht to the other. You don't need it. You don't need a $3 billion home. I mean, granted, in a little cozy one bedroom, it's nice, good neighborhood, really close to really cool things. I would like a little bit of a bigger place to live in. A little more open, a little airy. I get it. Everyone wants their space. You know, last week I did a bit about, uh, you know, going mad in the cave, going mad in the cave. I, I can see how people go mad in America because their life isn't what they had hoped and dreamed for. But you know what? We make choices in life. Everyone makes choices. And you can say, well, you know, my choices, I had to make tough choices. You know, so what? Everyone's got to make tough choices. The problem is scapegoating. Scapegoating. And everyone who's, who's down, feels down and bullied, has been trained in this country to be like, well, I'm down and bullied. I'm down and bullied. I'm going to pass that along. I'm going to bully someone else. I tell you, all you got to do is uh, not pass that shit on. I mean, it's like uh, if you're the dude who's got herpes, right? Because I know some of you guys out there, I know you got herpes. Hey, man, you did fucking, some of it was unprotected, you got burned. It happens, you know? It happens. Could happen to you. Could happen to me. Could happen to this plant up here. This plant can have herpes. It's not his fault. But if that plant has herpes and then knowingly passes herpes on, that's pretty scumbaggery. That's pretty much scumbaggerish. That's scumbaggerism. It's Urban Dictionary, scumbaggerism. We've got a country that seemingly has a lot of people who either have spiritual herpes and are willingly trying to keep other people down by giving them spiritual herpes, or, or, they don't even know they have spiritual herpes. They don't even know. Spiritual herpes. There's no cure for spiritual herpes. It's a virus. But you could suppress spiritual herpes. Oh yeah. You could suppress spiritual herpes. Now you may not learn a lot from these last 25 minutes of me yammering. But you're going to learn two things. One, growth inhibitor and bait. That's how you get rid of cockroaches. Two, spiritual herpes is a virus. It's got no cure. You have to first understand, oh my God, I might have contracted spiritual herpes. When my uncle touched me when I was five, I got spiritual herpes. When my best friend stole my girlfriend in junior high school, I got spiritual herpes. When I got drunk and passed out in the hallway 
and my friend had sex with me while I was sleeping, and he was a dude, I got spiritual herpes. We've got to learn how to diagnose it. We got to learn to stand up and say, I've got spiritual herpes and I'm okay with it. And I'm not going to give it to you or to her or to him or this plant. No, because I could suppress spiritual herpes. I could get it to where it's non-diagnosable in my bloodstream in my spiritual aura with love, with gratefulness, with empathy, with kindness, and with listening. And then you see spiritual herpes out. So you heard it here first. This country, I diagnose the United States of America with spiritual herpes. Figure it out if you got it, and stop passing it on. Jack Zulo out! Jack Zulo out! Guys, thank you very much for coming to the We Make Movies Twitch channel. I'm Jack Zulo. Uh, earlier in the hour, you saw Anya Jones. You could check her out. I've listed her her website uh, in the uh, in the in the uh, in the comments section of this Twitch stream of this Twitch room. And uh, for me. I'm Jack Zulo. Twitter and Instagram is at Jack Zulo. On Facebook, you can find my professional page at Jack Zulo Acts Funny. And more importantly, this channel, We Make Movies, is such a dynamic group of filmmakers and movers and shakers. And I'm not talking Hollywood movers and shakers. I'm talking about real world outreach. We got some big news coming up about some of the things our CEO and our president have done as far as workshopping, working with disadvantaged children or teenagers and helping them find their voice through art, through filmmaking. We've been teaching people how to utilize cheap materials to make studio quality, festival quality, screening on the big screen quality films with just your phone and just a few apps and just a couple of programs on your computer. We Make Movies is an activist organization. We support Black Lives Matter. We support equal rights. We support justice. But more importantly, we support you. Check us out, wemakemovies.org. Check out our newsletter, it's free. wemakemovies.org slash newsletter. Check out our upcoming calendar at uh, wemakemovies.org slash events. Uh, we do a lot of great things. Coming up in an hour, we've got our head of production, Eric Michael Cottero, who happens to be one of my closest friends. He's going to do a little indie talk. It's called EMK Indie Talk. That's going to be going on about a half an hour, maybe longer, of what's going on in the indie film community, what's going on in the culture right now, what's going on in the tech community, of indie film because We Make Movies is on the forefront and is a tech savvy group with connections to, I don't want to say, I don't want to drop names here, but uh, you know, we got connections or a little corporate world of uh, making things happen. And uh, so check that out here on the Twitch channel. Uh, that's coming up in an hour. Uh, tomorrow we have a couple of shows. I got to confirm them on the schedule. You can check our, twi uh, our, our Twitter feed at We Make Movies. Uh, on Twitter uh, for the schedule or Instagram at We Make Movies. Uh, tomorrow, confirm the shows that are coming up tomorrow. <coughs> Thursday, we have From the Vault. Friday, we have Improv Improvaganza. And then we have Obscure Movie Night. Uh, got a lot of things going on. Uh, we got a lot of things coming out of our production house that you'll be seeing at festivals. You'll be seeing in the mainstream. You'll be seeing them streamed online. So, uh, hope to see you there. Hope you sign up. If this is your first time at the We Made Movies Twitch channel, please follow us. If you got a little money, if you like what you see, hey, you might want to get a subscription for a month, maybe two months. There's also a tip jar. If you liked any of the performers tonight or any other night, you want to throw a tip down, hey, man, I'm doing okay. I don't need it. But your two bucks means you love me. Take care, guys. Have a great night. And, uh, yeah, we will talk soon.